Let's begin a journey through the realms of human psyche and its profound depths. This narrative will weave a tale that takes us to places beyond our understanding. Those darker spaces that lie outside our everyday perceptions. You might wonder why we are diving deep into these murky waters. The answer is simple, understanding. By illuminating the darkest corners of the human mind, we get a glimpse into the motivation and reason behind the actions that some individuals take. Joram Peterson revolves around the idea that not every human action is born from good intentions. Through real life examples and thought provoking analysis, we are about to challenge our innate belief systems about human nature. All right, so anyways, out there in the underworld, in the place beyond your current conceptualizations, that's the place of death and nature and it's beyond the, the light and it's also the place of hell and that's what you see here. And, and what do you, how, how do you conceptualize that? Well. One of the things you'll see, if, if, if you're interested in this sort of thing, if you ever go read the writings of, of the Columbine killers, the, the teens, they're very interesting. They're very much worth r reading, especially, I think it's Dylan Klebold, who was the more literate of the, of the two. But he tells you exactly where he went after brooding and brooding and brooding on his, his isolation and segregation from mankind. So he's out there beyond, he's out there in a chaotic domain, and because he's tortured by that, his thoughts take an unbelievably dark turn. Like, it's unimaginably dark. Um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, you could read that. There's another book you could read called Panzram, P-A-N-Z-R-A-M. And it's a fascinating book. It's about this guy who, I think he raped 1,200 men. So that sort of tells you what sort of guy he was. Extraordinarily physically powerful and brutal and malevolent. And he was kind of a juvenile delinquent type. And they put him in a reform school, and he was not well treated in that reform school. It's sort of like the worst of the Canadian residential schools. And when he came out, he was not a happy boy. Columbine Killers offers an understanding of the facts of isolation and continuous brooding on a person's mental state. It emphasizes that such introspection can lead individuals down an unimaginably dark path, detaching them from humanity's collective consciousness. Motivations behind people who engage in heinous acts, emphasizing that not everyone has good intentions. The sheer malevolence of their actions showcases their conscious, well-defined, dark motivations. The portion focuses on the dangerous game of competition among mass murderers, emphasizing that not all people with good intentions simply go wrong. The external factors influencing their choices make them ripe targets for malevolent entities. And finally the conclusion, we've traversed the challenging terrains of the human psyche, diving deep into the motivations and drives of individuals who exhibit malevolent behavior. Our journey through the maze of human thought and action has offered us an array of emotions, curiosity, fear, understanding and even disbelief. Joram Peterson reminds us that humans are complex creatures. While we often like to believe in the inherent good of people, this narrative highlights the duality of our nature. Not everyone acts out of goodness or ill intent. Sometimes circumstances, personal histories and even societal structures play a crucial role in shaping a person's actions. The tale of Panzram isn't just a chronicle of a man's descent into darkness. It's a glaring reflection of a broken system that perpetuated his rage. The Columbine shooter's story isn't merely about teens taking a disastrous path. It's also about the dangers of isolation and the profound impact of brooding over perceived injustices. Moreover, the narrative sheds light on our cognitive processes. As humans, we tend to cling to familiar structures and beliefs when faced with unknown situations. This can be both our strength and our downfall. While these structures offer a semblance of understanding, they can also cloud our judgment and prevent us from seeing the bigger picture. The conclusion also poses a challenge to us, the audience. Now equipped with this new understanding, how do we perceive those around us? Do we continue to believe in the inherent good of all or become cynical of every intention? The answer is neither black nor white. Instead, it calls for a balanced approach, acknowledging the complexities of human behavior while maintaining a sense of compassion and empathy. In essence, Joram Peterson does more than just detail the grim aspects of human nature. It beckons us to introspect, to understand the why behind actions, and to cultivate an open mind. After all, in understanding the darker parts of our psyche, we also pave the way for healing, growth, and transformation.
Through this narrative journey, we've been given a key to unlock deeper levels of understanding, to foster empathy even in the face of malevolence, and to tread the fine line between naivety and cynicism. As we conclude, let's remember that every story, no matter how dark, has a lesson, and the onus is on us to discern, learn, and grow.